Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to the NVG Nick YouTube channel. Today, we are launching a brand new show on this channel entitled The Prime Time Podcast. This is my first attempt at a podcast on this channel. And uh, this is going to be a historic first episode because for two main reasons. A, I've never done a podcast before, but I am a fan of several here on YouTube. There are several different shows from some of my favorite YouTubers out there that uh, do a podcast weekly that I watch uh, pretty religiously. So I'm very excited to try my hand at it myself. And also, this is not going to be edited. This is going to be raw, like unpolished, just... Uh, very, very conversational type show. So if you see uh, or hear rather any mistakes or stutters or anything, that's just going to be all kept in, right? We're just going to keep it raw, uh, just the, the natural sound uh, from the recording there uh, for you guys. And this is the main reason why I wanted to do a uh, podcast type show on this channel, because for the last few months, I've been doing a lot of these big like research projects on this channel. Uh, some of my latest videos have been, uh, you know, these very big comprehensive projects uh, regarding TV. And I wanted to take it back to, uh, you know, basics, right? Bring it back uh, to what this channel's roots were founded on. Just these very simple, you know, topics that we can just talk about and have some discussions for in the comments. Uh, sometimes on this show we'll have guests, sometimes it'll just be me like today's episode. Uh, but either way, we are always going to be talking about TV, what's new in TV, what's hot on TV right now, uh, some of the more, uh, you know, relevant topics regarding news and TV. I'm kind of modeling this after uh, one of my favorite podcasts called The Podcast That Rocked, uh, hosted by a gentleman named Luke over on the channel Rocked that he does with his girlfriend weekly that discuss uh, any news and anything relevant going on in the world of rock and metal. Uh, in the world of music there, and I wanted to kind of take that and spin it for TV. So this is my first attempt at it, like I said. So if you guys do enjoy this, I really would appreciate it if you like, and of course subscribe if you haven't done so already. So for this pilot episode here, we are going to go over the 2021 to 2022 United States Network Television schedule. Uh, I do have to admit, I am a little bit late to the party here. Uh, I meant to do a video on this in some form uh, a couple weeks ago when this was freshly announced. Uh, you can see here all of the networks announced them back in May. So I'm a few weeks old to this, but it's still uh, you know new enough that I think this will work for the uh, pilot episode, like I said here. And again, this is just a more conversational type topic. Uh, not nothing that we're gonna like you know uh, have to edit down or like you know polish up and stuff. We can just go over this very casually here. Uh, so if you're not familiar with how this works, every May, the major five networks here in the United States, those are NBC, Fox, ABC, CBS, and the CW, all release their upcoming fall schedule for all the shows that they're going to be broadcasting throughout the fall season. Uh, typically, it'll be, you know, any new shows that come up and any returning shows they'll announce as well as, in general, the shows that they're either renewing or they're canceling or shows that are ending uh, from the previous season, they'll announce that as well. And today we're going to go over the uh, all of the uh, days for the fall schedule, and we're going to kind of look and compare all of the uh, different networks and see uh, how they all compare to one another here. And as we go through, I'm going to uh, kind of describe the shows for you. Of course, if there's new shows, I'll explain uh, what those are going to be. And uh, of course, let me know if you guys are interested in watching any of these as well. Uh, and then I'll also be going over the shows that I'll be watching for uh, the upcoming fall schedule as well here. Uh, before we get into that, i got to crack open a, a drink here so I don't get uh, too dehydrated while doing this. Mm. It's going to be kind of gross listening to me drink here, so I apologize for that, but... Mm. I have a sparkling nice energy drink here, blue raspberry flavored. Delicious there. All right, so as we scroll down here, uh, I am using Wikipedia mostly because it's going to be nice because they already kind of have it structured and formatted so you can compare all the different shows with one another, which is what we're obviously going to be doing here. But also, if I were to just do this on my own and just look for, you know, myself to see what uh, TV shows are coming back and stuff, I would be using Wikipedia. So it's nice to uh, compare the shows and it'll be easy for me to show you guys here on screen. 
Uh, you can see the legend there, so they have a few different categories of what the shows are based in. Uh, we have light blue, which is local programming, gray is encore reruns, essentially. Uh, blue gray is news, and then light green is sporting, which we will be talking about here uh, as we go through. So we're going to start off with Sunday. We're just going to go week by week, or day by day here, rather. Um, any of the new shows will be in bold there, it says. And all of these times are for the Eastern U.S., so EST, right? And that's where I'm located, so this is easy for me. But if you guys are uh, anywhere else, then you can do the calculations there. So 7 would be 6 Central, and 8 would be 7 Central, etc., as we go through. And uh, you can probably notice that these are all prime time as well, which is like the main event, right? Prime time TV. Uh, for Sunday specifically, it's 7 to 11, and then for every other day, it's 8 to 11. Uh, so usually a nice block there of a few hours for prime time. So let's go through here network by network, and we'll go over the shows, and I'll give you my thoughts on how everything is structured here. So we have ABC up first, and all these will be in alphabetical, as you can tell. At 7, we have America's Funniest Home Videos, classic TV show. It's been on for decades here, so no surprises that it's returning for 2021 here. At 8, we have Celebrity Wheel of Fortune, which is actually a show that was brought in last year as a mid-season replacement. Uh, ABC has been on top with these game shows, and they've been bringing back a lot of like classic game shows for prime time here. Uh, 8 o'clock, they have uh, Celebrity Wheel of Fortune there. And 9, Supermarket Sweep, which is another one of those classic game shows. And then at 10, The Rookie there. So overall, I think that this one is okay. I'm not going to say it's fantastic. It's probably not something that I'm going to watch. But I think for ABC, you know, it'll do the trick there. Uh, like I said, AFV, something that's been on for, I think, 30 years or something now. Uh, I was reading the other day that this is like its 31 or 32nd uh, season on TV. So it's been on for decades and decades. Uh, Wheel of Fortune and Supermarket Sweep. In my opinion, of all of the kind of classic game shows that ABC has brought back in recent times that they've kind of revamped for the modern audience, I think that these two personally are some of their weaker ones. I know that the Celebrity Wheel of Fortune is a big draw because obviously it's celebrities and Wheel of Fortune in general, a lot of people enjoy it. But for me personally, it's just not something that I'm super interested in. And same thing with Supermarket Sweep, that one hosted by Leslie Jones, I know, uh, from SNL fame, if you guys are not familiar. Uh, Supermarket Sweep is a really old show, way back from the 80s, and to me, I think it's really dated. Um, it's not really something that translates too well to, like, nowadays, like, what the current times kind of call for. I just feel like it's really, really dated in that respect. So to me, I feel like they kind of misfired here because... I would have brought back something like Celebrity Family Feud, which is one of my favorites. They have Pyramid, they have Match Game, they have Card Sharks. They just have so many better options, I feel like, uh, for these game shows that they could have stacked better. And then the other kind of weird choice is The Rookie here at 10, which is not associated with these game shows at all. It's a drama, it's a police procedural, and uh, it doesn't really match this format either because the other three are just kind of like these fun, you know, family-friendly kind of reality show, game show type things. And then you have this, like, hard-hitting, you know, intense police drama right after it at 10. So I just feel like the whole thing it just doesn't really meld all that well. It just, there isn't really a lot of chemistry with these shows. Uh, overall, I would say this is just an okay schedule for ABC here. For CBS here, let's go over. We have 60 Minutes at 7. The Equalizer at 8, NCIS Los Angeles at 9, and SEAL Team at 10. And in my opinion, this is a way better schedule. Uh, all of these shows, with the exception of 60 Minutes, right, are all like these hard-hitting dramas. They're all police procedurals again. Uh, the Equalizer is a show that was new for last season and was actually uh, put on their streaming service, CBS All Access, for a little while. Uh, initially, and then when it did really well over there, then they brought it to TV and they reran it for the spring, I believe, and now it's coming back for season two in the fall. Uh, so a lot of people really into the Equalizer there. It's based on the 80s TV show as well as the remake they did as a movie back in like 2013, 2014 with Denzel Washington. And this version, this version uh, is uh, led by Queen Latifah, so obviously a big fan base for her as well. So that's been a big hit for them over the last couple of years. Uh, NCIS LA, probably my favorite of all of these. I watch that a lot in syndication. 
uh, Ion, if you guys are familiar, plays a lot of NCIS type shows and they play Los Angeles all the time. And uh, like I said, it's personally one of my favorites. I've never watched it when it's like a new episode. Like it's not something I would like have to watch, you know, to keep up with because I'm just not as familiar with the uh, whole franchise as a whole like I am with, say, Law & Order, for instance. But every once in a while, I'll watch a couple episodes here and there. Uh, L.O. Cool G on that one. I'm a big fan of him. So that's always a lot of fun to see. And then SEAL Team is another one that I believe was on CBS All Access. They're streaming and then it got big on there and then they brought it to TV as well. And I think this is its fourth or fifth season now. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but this has been on for a few years as well. So I think that this schedule is way better than uh, ABC's in my opinion. I think it's stacked way better. All of these are in the same genre. Uh, they all have, you know, really good chemistry. They all flow really nicely. Uh, big fan bases on all of these that'll, you know, sit down and watch the entire block. So I think CBS uh, really nailed it here. For the CW here on Sunday, we have local programming at 7 and at 10 because CW only runs two hours on uh, the weekends there. And we have Legends of the Hidden Temple at 8 and Killer Camp at 9. Now, what's really interesting about the CW, kind of in general, is they are always an underdog, right? The CW has always struggled to kind of maintain its, its place in the uh, U.S. market, at least, in terms of c compared to all the other networks, because the other networks have all had, uh, you know, much more time to kind of develop their audience and develop their sound and their their style and genre and everything. And the CW has always kind of lagged behind there uh, in terms of its audience. They're always an underdog in that respect. Uh, a lot of the CW shows are very similar to one another, so I feel like if you like the CW, you're going to be watching a lot of their shows because it's all kind of based around the same sort of style. It's like the the DC type stuff, the superhero type stuff, kind of the fantasy sci-fi type stuff as well. Uh, pretty much all of their shows kind of fit under that umbrella, right? So if you're a fan of the CW, you're pretty much a fan of everything that they put out. But on Sundays specifically, uh, at least for this year, which is actually another thing is they never used to broadcast on the weekends. So that's actually something that's been uh, kind of new for them over the past couple of years. They've started to uh, kind of expand their schedule uh, to do Sunday and Saturday too, which is awesome, I feel like. And for this year, they're taking a couple older shows and they're bringing them to the U.S. market, which is cool. Uh, Legends of the Hidden Temple is a really old Nickelodeon show, believe it or not, from the 90s that they're bringing back. Uh, and it, you could argue it's kind of like syndication in a way because it's an older show that they're rebroadcasting but they're kind of uh, revamping it for, uh, again, the modern audience in a way, which is really cool. And uh, if you're a fan of shows like Double Dare or Nick Arcade, it has that same sort of structure to it, kind of like an obstacle course uh, type show that was pretty popular back in the day on Nickelodeon. And then Killer Camp is the same idea, uh, another one of these like obstacle course type shows. Uh, but this is actually a British show that was new for 2019. So it's been on for a couple seasons now. And like I said, they're bringing it to the U.S. market, which is cool. So kind of expanding it. So all in all, I don't think that the CW can compete at least against like CBS again, because their audience is way smaller. But I think that these two could work really well with one another. Uh, it's a bit of a niche or market because it doesn't have the same sort of overall appeal as like a drama or these other game shows like Wheel of Fortune or something. But I think for the very specific audience that it that it fits for, uh, I think it could be a really big success for them. I, and it's cool to see them expanding out of their uh, sort of, you know, zone and their their lane that they're so used to being in. Uh, like I said, kind of expanding onto the weekends and trying some new stuff with their program. And I think is really, really admirable. For Fox here, let's take a look. We have at 7 and 7.30 uh, football coverage. So they have the NFL there and the OT, which is their kind of like post-coverage uh, game with all their commentators and stuff. So that's all sports. And then after that, at 8, we have The Simpsons. At 8.30, we have The Great North. At 9, we have Bob's Burgers. And at 9.30, we have Family Guy. And then, of course, at 10, their local news as well, uh, which is something that Fox is also uh, kind of uh, in the same lane as the CW4 that they only broadcast at 8 and 9 on the uh, weekends there. Well, they do it all uh, in every day, frankly. They do 8 and 9, so only two hours worth of content. 
But um, aside from the 7 o'clock, which is the football, because football is obviously going to dominate, and we'll talk about that in just a sec when we get to NBC, uh, football and sports in general are always going to be on top compared to any other show that they uh, compete against just because it's football, you know, it's sports. And uh, obviously, you know, if that's your thing, that's awesome, but we're here to talk about the actual TV TV. So uh, let's talk about these animated shows. And Fox has always been uh, familiar with the animated programming, with the cartoons. Uh, that's been their niche for decades now, uh, ever since the 80s, with The Simpsons, of course, being broadcast all the way back in the day. And they've continued with this animation domination on uh, Sunday, as they call it, uh, this little block of a couple hours here. Uh, for many, many years. So they're continuing it this year, which is awesome to see. And I think that, again, this stack is really, really well done. I think that they have a really good schedule here. The Simpsons as the lead-in at 8 is perfect because it's the most popular one and it's the one that's most recognizable. So putting that up front is really smart, bringing people in and then keeping them around for the rest of the day there. Uh, and obviously having football even before then will bring in a lot of people as well. So excellent, excellent uh, transition there. The Great North is actually a newer show that they did for last year. It was new, and it's really good, but in terms of ratings and kind of like popularity, it's very hit or miss. Some of, some of the episodes were really, really popular, depending on how they were stacked, if they were put with other shows. Uh, sometimes they would reach upwards of 6 million viewers, which is huge for Fox and huge for the animation scene but other ones were as low as 1.5 million, which is a little more realistic. So that could be a bit of a hit or miss. It's a little bit of a gamble there, but I think having it uh, in between The Simpsons and Bob's Burgers, which are, again, huge and massively popular, uh, is a very smart move there. And then, of course, Bob's Burgers, I just mentioned, is uh, another huge show. And then Family Guy to round it out at 9.30, which I think is smart as well, uh, kind of bookending it with The Simpsons and Family Guy, which are the most legendary and the most popular of all of the shows they have. Now, I believe that they're also going to expand the animation uh, domination kind of block for Mondays as well, but they're not going to do that for the fall. They're going to save that for the spring. So there's a couple other shows that they have renewed from last year that they are going to bring back in this sort of block as well, such as Duncanville, I know, is a big one. Uh, but they're not going to broadcast that for the fall. So we won't talk about it in this episode. Uh, when we get to the spring, if I ever do another podcast episode on this, then we'll talk about those shows more in depth. Uh, but for now, I think the Fox uh, schedule is really, really solid as well. I think Fox and CBS definitely have the biggest legs up here for Sunday so far. And then for NBC rounding it out, uh, they're just going to play football all day, the Sunday Night Football now, in terms of ratings, that's obviously going to be massive, right? They're easily going to sweep it. Uh, Sunday Night Football is consistently the biggest show on TV for the past, like, five to ten years, right? It's always been number one in ratings because football and sports, of course. Um, but the one thing that's interesting about it is the fact that later we're going to talk about another network that's going to do football for the fall in on another day. And uh, we're going to see kind of how those compete with those particular shows that it's up against and then uh, how it'll compete against Sunday Night Football on NBC, which they've held for many, many years. So like I said, that one is going to take it. NBC is going to win this night in terms of ratings. But as far as the individual shows, I think CBS and Fox have the, one, they have the win here uh, between their stacks. I think they both have the best chemistry. They both have the best consistency with one another. Uh, all these dramas here and then all of the animated sitcoms, of course, they just meld really well. And I think overall the weakest uh, network here is ABC for sure. I think they kind of misfired with the shows that they've picked and then the shows that they've paired it with. I don't think The Rookie was a very smart move on their part to uh, bookend it with these uh, game shows here. All right, let's move on to Monday here. We're going to continue it on here. Starting with ABC, we have Dancing with the Stars between 8 and 10 and then The Good Doctor at 10 o'clock there. Uh, that has been a very popular structure for a lot of networks to do over the years is the uh, two-hour reality competition type show and then a 10 o'clock drama following it. And I think that this is a bit better than what they had on Sunday, but I don't think it's perfect either. Uh, Dancing with the Stars, in terms of the po general popularity that that show has had over the years, it, uh, it 
currently is at its lowest point it's ever seen in ratings. Um, one interesting thing about Dancing with the Stars is I actually learned when I was researching for my best TV show uh, project uh, a couple months ago is American Idol used to be the biggest show on TV. Uh, when it first debuted back in 2002, between 2002 and 2006, uh, for the first four years, it was the number one show on TV, right? That's just the power that American Idol had way back in the day. At two th in 2006, that was the last year it was number one. The year following that, Dancing with the Stars overtook it for the first time, and then that became the number one show on TV for 2007. So at one point, it was like really big, and it had a massive, massive audience behind it. But ever since then, I mean, that was, what, almost 15 years ago now since that happened. Uh, Dancing with the Stars has been on a huge downward slope uh, ever since then. And like I said, it's seen the lowest ratings of pretty much any uh, reality competition now. There's really only two uh, nowadays that really have maintained themselves as, like, massive, massive TV shows. And one of them is The Voice here, which you see NBC has directly competing with Dancing with the Stars there. So... In my opinion, The Voice is easily going to sweep it, uh, even though I don't watch either one personally. I don't really like either of those shows all too much, but just in terms of ratings and, you know, the general kind of zeitgeist that they hold, uh, The Voice is easily going to dominate. So that's another kind of boneheaded move on ABC's part. I don't really think that Dancing with the Stars has the clout or the popularity to kind of compete with a lot of these other shows. Um, but it still has a pretty loyal fan base, so I can see why they put it there uh, as, you know, a fall lead-in. And then The Good Doctor following that is actually a show that me and my girlfriend watch pretty regularly. Uh, she's a big fan of medical shows, so we end up watching uh, quite a bit of them here. And I've seen a few episodes of The Good Doctor. Uh, I believe I talked about that in a previous video, actually. I think it was the drama tournament. Uh, we talked about that, in, and I do like it. Uh, I haven't seen a ton of medical shows in general because it's not really a uh, sort of style that I'm super into. But as far as the ones that I have watched, I think The Good Doctor is one of the better ones. So we'll probably be watching at least a little bit of that uh, this year uh, when it comes out back uh, on Mondays there. But definitely not Dancing with the Stars. So all in all, this is another one for ABC that is just okay, right? Nothing that's going to be like groundbreaking here. Nothing that's going to like take them to the top of the ratings. But, you know, for what it works for its audience, it's okay, right? Uh, for CBS here, they are doing the 2-2 two, two method, which is two sitcoms at 8 and 8.30, and then two dramas here at 9 and 10. Now, personally, I've never been a big fan of this schedule either because I feel like it alienates a lot of people when you have two of one style and then two of another style. And I've never really been a fan of that in terms of just like looking at it statistically because they always lose people uh, in the transition, right? I'm much more of a fan of like having three dramas all throughout the night or four sitcoms and then a drama to bookend it, I think is smart as well. But let's go over the actual shows. We have The Neighborhood at 8, Bob Hart's Abishola at 8.30, NCIS at 9, and NCIS Hawaii at 10. Uh, that's a new show that we'll talk about in a second here. Now, the two sitcoms here, uh, The Neighborhood and Bob Hart's Abishola, are both returning from last year, uh, both in their... Well, The Neighborhood has actually been on for, I think, four seasons. I think it's fourth season now. And Bob Hart's Abishola was new for last year that they tied it to the neighborhood. So these two have been on the schedule in years past, and they've worked well together. Uh, as you know, I'm a big sitcom guy myself. Uh, it's probably my favorite style of TV to watch. And I do like both of these shows. So I think that's, again, a really smart play there to tie those together. Uh, 8 and 8.30, you know, having them up front there as the first shows of the night, I think, is smart as well. Then we have NCIS at 9 there. NCIS, hands down is like the most popular drama on TV. Like there's no question about it. Um, a, a while ago, uh, back in like 2016 to like 2019 for like three or four years in that, in that, uh, you know, time period, it was Sunday Night Football, NCIS and Big Bang Theory were always the top three shows of the season. Um, and you can kind of gather that from each category, right? So we have a live sporting thing, we have a drama, and we have a sitcom. And those three uh, routinely kind of recycled throughout the top three. They're kind of trading places each year, uh, depending on their individual ratings there. But so NCIS has a massive, massive audience, and it's not slowing down anytime soon. 
Uh, it's had a ton of different spinoff shows. We saw that with Los Angeles here earlier, and now they're bringing a new spinoff into it with Hawaii here. Uh, I don't really know much about the NCAS franchise as a whole. Like I said, I'm really only familiar with Los Angeles specifically, but I know that it's massive. I know it's hugely popular, and uh, just having another show in the canon there is going to be a massive hit for CBS there. Uh, NCIS Hawaii, that seems like a really good uh, kind of location to put an NCIS show because they used to do Hawaii Five O as well, which I know was very popular uh, from way back in the day. And then they revamped it and they did a reboot of it. And that was also really big for them. So they are just playing to their strengths, right? They're just bringing back classic, uh, you know, locations and, and classic setups that they know their audience likes and they know their audience is familiar with here and they're tying it all together uh, in a really really solid package here uh, like i said the the format itself is i think the only weak part of this but the two sitcoms work really well together and then of course the two dramas being as part of the same franchise there works great as well so this is another definite thumbs up for cbs here for the CW here, uh, taking inspiration from Friday Night Lights here with their first show, The American, or All American, excuse me. Uh, this is a sports drama that debuted a couple years ago, so this is on its second or third season, I believe. And uh, from what I've heard, this is a very, very good show. If anyone out there listening to this is a big fan of Friday Night Lights or any sort of just like, you know, football type drama in general, uh, I, you will definitely like this show from what I've heard. This hits like all the right notes when it comes to the, uh, the intensity and the story and the characters. Like this is one of the better ones that's come out in a long time. So I uh, definitely recommend it for any sports fans out there. And then we have a new show here, The 4400, which is a remake of an old sci-fi show from the early 2000s, mid 2000s, something like that. Uh, that was on USA Network a long time ago. Uh, and to me, this might seem like kind of a random choice that they kind of just like brought out from like uh, like a weird batch of shows that they just had to pick from. But it actually makes more sense when you break it down because the CW has been really, really good with these sort of dystopian type sci-fi shows that they've done uh, over the past few years. We saw them do huge numbers with the 100. That was one of the most popular shows that they had for a long, long time. And that ended a couple years ago. And ever since then, they've kind of been looking to fill that void because they haven't really had a show that fits that narrative for a while now. And I think the 4400 is a really good choice for it because it has that same sort of setup. It has that same sort of plot, uh, the dystopian kind of wasteland where a group of survivors have to kind of band together to survive, right? That's kind of the... A basic sort of uh, format that the show carries and I don't know if it was super popular back in the day but if it has you know a, a fan base already if it's tied to an already existing IP uh, that always helps it in some way but on the other hand remakes are always tricky you're always gonna have a group of people that will uh, you know dismiss it as just like corporate and just a cash grab for kind of uh, trying to uh, go back to something that was already done, you know, instead of trying something new and innovating. So you can always have a group of people that will kind of, you know, dismiss it in that regard. Uh, so there are ta they are taking a bit of a gamble here with uh, putting this on the fall schedule specifically. But I think the CW specifically uh, can do it better than most other networks. Because like I said, they have that style. Uh, they've pretty much perfected it with the 100. I know a lot of people absolutely love that show. Uh, so if they can nail it again, I think they'll have another big win on their hands for that. And then a local program at 10 as well there uh, for the 10 o'clock. So I think these two together could work, but it really depends on how the 4400 is received because uh, that's a bit of a gamble there. Next up here, we have Fox, and they have two dramas as well for their Monday lineup. They have 911 at 8, and then they have a new show as well called The Big Leap at 9 there, local program at 10 as well there. Uh, for 911, that is a show that me and my girlfriend absolutely love. We watch that every single week. Uh, we watch that, and then their spin off show, Lone Star, with Rob Lowe, which we really like as well. Now, that isn't going to come back till the spring, I heard. So they will, uh, they're going to delay that one till the spring, which is how they had it last year, which makes sense. But the OG one that has been hugely popular for Fox, one of their biggest shows in a long, long time, uh, coming back at full force here at 8 o'clock, which I think is awesome. I can't wait to see new episodes of that. And then for 9 o'clock here, The Big Leap, which is a brand new show. 
It's a cross between something like Glee and something like Smash, and then something uh, maybe like, uh, you know, a kind of like comedy drama musical type thing. Kind of has all the, those, oh, excuse me, all those different elements of a bunch of different genres and a bunch of different shows that we've seen before, uh, but done in a bit of a different way. Now, I don't know if Fox specifically is really the right network for this because with Glee, that was a big success with uh, audiences, but it wasn't really so much with critics, right? A lot of people think that that show really didn't do much uh, for the way that it was supposed to, and a lot of people say it's overrated. And for something like a Smash, on the other hand, which was on NBC a few years back, uh, that one was big with critics, but not so much with audiences. So these musical drama comedy type shows, they're really hard to nail on both fronts. Either you get one group and not the other. Uh, and I think with Fox, it's a bit of a gamble here. It's definitely risky to put it on a fall schedule. This is more something that you would see more as a spring replacement or, you know, a spring show uh, that's kind of had time to kind of market itself and promote itself a little better. I haven't seen a lot of buzz for this, honestly, so I'm not sure how well it's going to perform in terms of uh, the channel and the demographics that it's after. But it is after 911, which is important because 911 is huge and it has a massive audience, like me and my girlfriend, I said. So that could help it in some way. Me and my girlfriend may be watching this. We, we could watch this show if it's marketed right. So it, it depends a lot on how they kind of perceive the show and, and what they kind of do to get the word out about it. And then lastly here we have NBC, which has The Voice between 8 and 10, and this new show called Ordinary Joe at 10 through 11 there. Uh, we already talked about The Voice, that that is a huge reality competition, huge singing show. Uh, it's easily going to sweep over Dancing with the Stars specifically, but it has a good chance of taking over a lot of these other shows too. Uh, going up against 911 and NCIS is going to be a little tricky. Uh, a lot of competition here on Monday, for sure. It's definitely going to be a competitive uh, 8 to 10 slot there. And then Ordinary Joe is a brand new show that they're bringing to the fall schedule here, going up against The Good Doctor and NCIS Hawaii there. Uh, I feel like this particular one is not going to work for NBC specifically. Uh, this is another sci-fi type show. Uh, kind of has like a dystopian element to it as well and their track record specifically with these types of shows has never been good um they like for some reason NBC does not have the right audience does not have the right market to pull one of these shows off there's always at least one or two every season it seems like that they try to market that they push really hard and it just always flops and it just always disappoints. So I feel like that's another one that's just kind of going to sweep under the rug and, and it's just going to kind of pass everyone by and no one's really going to be interested in it. Uh, again, I haven't seen really any marketing for this either. So uh, kind of not really getting the word out there, like I said, like they really need to be. Uh, so overall, I think the dramas there uh, between The Good Doctor and NCS Hawaii are going to uh, be a little bit more popular. And I think in, in terms of ratings, the competition is going to be really stiff uh, at 10 o'clock there. So overall, I think the winners of Monday are Fox, CBS, and NBC, at least with the voice there. Uh, Fox with 911, and then CBS with uh, their NCIS shows there at 9 and 10. But overall, uh, a very, very mixed schedule. A lot of competition, like I said. Going to be really interesting to see how it all folds out uh, come fall there. What is this? I actually don't remember what this one is. All right, on Tuesday here, we have a, another pretty competitive schedule here, so let's go over it. Uh, on ABC, we have The Bachelorette from 8 to 10 there, and then a new drama called Queens from 10 to 11 there. Uh, Bachelorette is another reality show that's kind of been losing steam over the years. Uh, the Bachelor and The Bachelorette uh, are considered by a lot of people to be just really cheesy, really corny type shows that specific... Uh, demographics will really 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 like but most people uh, kind of stray away from uh, seeing as that it's just 
a, a very, very like over the top, you know, style show that really only appeals to a very specific audience. And then uh, Queens is a brand new show. Haven't really heard much about it. Um, I know that it might be something that like Queen Latifah has a hand in because from what I saw from the trailers, it kind of reminded me of Girl Trip uh, that from that movie uh, from like 2018, which is like Queen Latifah and Tiffany Haddish was in it. Like just kind of like a, a, a fun comedy uh, type show, comedy drama type thing about just, uh, you know, a bunch, of, a bunch of black women uh, just having fun. You know, that's where I can describe it. I really don't know much else about it um, unless I'm totally wrong in it. But uh, it doesn't even have a page yet. You can see it's all black there. So there really isn't like any information about this show. They just kind of threw it on there without uh, really giving it a lot of thought, honestly. So I feel like that is just not really going to work out for them in the end. Uh, the Tuesday schedule for ABC is another one that they just really misfired on. Um, I mean, The Bachelorette, it's a big show for them. It's, it's a legacy show for sure. Uh, it always has a place on the fall schedule, but in terms of just ratings and competition, it's just really on a downward slope, like I said. So I feel like it it's really going to get uh, torn apart by a lot of these other dramas we'll talk about. Um, and then that new show, Queens, I just haven't heard anything about it. So I just feel like, uh, again, marketing is so, so important and getting the word out is so important when it comes to these uh, fall lineups that if you don't do it, you're not going to have a, a show on your hands. You know, you're just not going to have an audience. So that's a super, super, super vital part of it. And ABC is really lacking on that, uh, it seems like, for this fall lineup. For CBS, I dare say that this is probably the best lineup that CBS is going to have this fall with the FBI shows. We have FBI from 8 to 8.30, or excuse me, 8 to 9. Uh, 9 to 10 is going to be their new one, FBI International. And then from 10 to 11, we have FBI Most Wanted, which was the first spinoff they had. Uh, if you're not familiar, FBI is another police procedural. And as you can tell, it's very popular as it already has three shows for it. Uh, the first one debuted back in 2017, I think. Uh, it's about four or five years old now. So this is going to be its fourth or fifth season. And it already has two spinoffs already. FBI Most Wanted uh, was new for last year that they brought back for a second season. And FBI International is the newest one that they're debuting this year. And uh, the main reason why FBI has been so successful is one particular name that's tied to the production and the creation of it, and that is Dick Wolf. This is one of Dick Wolf's most popular franchises currently, and it's actually on CBS instead of NBC, which is really interesting. Um, but they have they have just uh, taken this and taken it to the skies here because FBI has been huge for CBS and their lineups of dramas for sure. Uh, my parents, huge FBI fans uh, for sure. So I know that they are going to absolutely love this schedule. They're going to be thrilled to see three FBI shows back to back to back like that. Uh, they've been Dick Wolf fans for a long, long time. They were actually the ones that introduced me to it. Them and my girlfriend was also a big Dick Wolf fan back in the day. Um, and so we all watch the Law and Orders, and then for my parents, they're more on the FBI train, and me and Steph are more on the Chicago PD and Chicago Fire train. Uh, and we'll talk about all of that a little bit later as well. But uh, this is another one that I just think CBS just absolutely nailed it. A uh, huge home run here with all the FBI shows. Uh, international being in the middle is always a little bit tricky because that's the one that's always new. So it's tough to, um, it's kind of hard to market it. Uh, in the middle there because you want to kind of ease your way into it, right? You kind of want to have the original up front and then the first spinoff in the middle and then the newest one on the end. Is how, that's how I would have placed it personally. Um, but sandwiching it in between I think could also work because then you introduce them uh, earlier and then you have people stick around for another one that they're familiar with. So we'll see how the actual numbers come out about it. But um, yeah, the FBI series, another huge, huge franchise that's come out in the last few years. So that is definitely going to be a massive W for CBS there. Speaking of W's, uh, the CW here. Uh, next up, they have The Flash at 8 and Riverdale at 9 here. And this is another one where I think this is the best lineup they have for the season here on Tuesday. Uh, the Flash and Riverdale are the top two shows that CW has put out, like in terms of both, uh, um, um, excuse me, <laughs> in terms of commercial success with the ratings, 
and critical reception, I think, has always been uh, big with these two. The Flash, of course, DC uh, based superhero there, so part of that sort of Arrowverse, DC verse uh, type group of shows. And then Riverdale, based on the Archie comics. Uh, that's another one of my girlfriend's favorites, so she's going to have a lot of shows this year uh, to keep up with, but uh, definitely a big, big win for the CW there. Uh, formerly, uh, their other one that was really popular that would be uh, kind of a solid top three with them along with The Flash and Riverdale was Supernatural. Uh, Supernatural has been on for years and years and years, and it recently ended last year. That was its last season, season 15, believe it or not. It has been on since 2005, which I just found out the other day uh, that it was on for that long, which absolutely blew my mind. So the CW, I think another huge win for them here with these two shows. I don't think in terms of like the actual ratings that they're going to top like CBS here or anything uh, or like NBC because we have the voice down here again. But I think they could line up as a very, very solid top three. I think The Bachelor they beat, honestly. I think they beat out The Bachelor there uh, on ABC because those two shows just hugely popular with a very, very specific loyal fan base, right? Anyone that's in the DC verse, there's, you know, five, six, seven different shows that they have sprung amongst uh, the CW there that they all are kind of, you know, in coordination with that uh, all of their audience has to keep up with. So it's a good incentive to, you know, kind of watch them all. And then, like I said, Riverdale is just huge as well. They're a big audience. Like my girlfriend has been a big fan of it since day one there. So I think the CW here has a very, very solid chance to get uh, possibly a top three spot here. I uh, really, really hoping to see that because like I said, they're always an underdog. So it's always fun to root for them. For Fox here, we have The Resident, which is returning, another medical drama that, uh, guess who, my girlfriend, uh, Steph, is a big fan of as well. And then a new show called Our Kind of People, which I actually have brought up here, because uh, I was going over the schedule a few days ago to kind of prep for this and kind of, you know, gather my thoughts for it. But a couple of these I couldn't really remember, so I brought this up here. And it looks like it's going to be a drama based on this gentleman, Lawrence's Graham's 1999 book of the same name. So our kind of people. And it looks like it's going to be kind of like a historical type thing. Um, the premise is that it's set in Massachusetts and it's going to follow... The series follows the journey of single mother Angela Vaughn as she sets out to reclaim her family's name. But she soon discovers a dark secret about her own mother's past that will turn her world upside down. So sounds pretty interesting there. Uh, like I said, it looks like kind of a historical drama, a soap opera, it says here. So kind of has some of those, you know, soap opera tropes to it as well, it sounds like. Um, probably not something, admittedly, that I'm going to be watching. But if that sounds interesting to you, I say definitely give it a shot there. Uh, the, having the lead-in for The Resident, it doesn't really sound like those two will match up all that much. So this is kind of one of weaker, this is kind of one of Fox's weaker schedules for this year. Um, but overall, you know, not too bad, uh, not compared to at least ABC here, which I still think has overall the weakest lineup. And then rounding it out, we have NBC here, which has The Voice at 8. We already talked about that. Uh, Labray, I think it's pronounced, at 9 here, and then New Amsterdam at 10. Uh, Labray, I, I hope that's how you pronounce it, um, is another drama that I have uh, pulled up here. And this one says... The synopsis, an epic adventure begins when a massive sinkhole opens up in the middle of Los Angeles, pulling hundreds of people and buildings into its depths. Those who fell in find themselves in a mysterious and dangerous primal land. No, prime, primal. Is that primal? Prime? Is that a typo or am I just dumb? Uh, correct me in the I think it's supposed to be primal. Primal lands where they have no choice but to band together to survive. Meanwhile, the rest of the world desperately seeks to understand what happened in search of answers. One family torn apart by this disaster will have to unlock secrets of this inexplic inexplicable event to help a way back to each other, help to find a way back to each other. Uh, so it sounds like another just kind of like fantasy type, uh, sci-fi type drama. Um, there have been shows that NBC has done in the past that feel similar to this, but not exactly the same. So if they can use some of those shows as pros to kind of help put the word out and market this and kind of make it feel like something that they've done in the past, but not like not a direct copycat, but, you know, help uh, kind of ease their audience into it 
enough, I think that could be a success. But again, it's a newer show, so it's going to be uh, a bit of a tough one to uh, kind of, you know, market and stuff like that. And then New Amsterdam, which is another medical show that has been uh, pretty popular for the last few years as well. So with this one, I would say this is kind of a weaker lineup overall for uh, most of these uh, schedules. But I think the CBS or the CBS and the CW specifically have the best lineups here. For sure, CBS has the number one in terms of ratings, I feel like, with the FBI shows. Again, massively popular dramas. And then in terms of like the fan favorite, I'm going to throw it to the CW here. I think The Flash and Riverdale definitely give them a, uh, a good shot here to get a pretty high mark in the ratings this year. Been talking for a while, so I'm going to give myself a drink here. All right, let's take a look at the Wednesday lineup here. Beginning with ABC here, we have their block of sitcoms here from, excuse me, from 8 to 10, and then we have a drama here at 10. So this is more what I'm after, right? The four sitcoms in a row and then a bookend drama at 10 o'clock there, which I've always been a fan of this lineup because, again, sitcoms here. And there haven't been as many here, so you'd think that this would be a pretty easy uh, win for ABC here because they're one of the only few that's doing this sort of format this year. But let's go over it and then we'll come back to that comment and we'll see uh, if it actually rings true. We have the Goldbergs at 8, the Wonder Years at 8.30, which is brand new this year, the Connors at 9, Home Economics at 9.30, and then their bookend drama is A Million Little Things. Now, if I'm being honest with you guys, I think that this is probably the weakest lineup that ABC is putting out for this schedule here. I think that this is probably one of the worst ABC Wednesday lineups that I've seen in a long, long time because ABC Wednesday used to be my all-time favorite. Like, the amount of excellent sitcoms that they've had over the years just cannot be understated. We had Modern Family on Wednesday. We had Blackish on Wednesday. We had American Housewife on Wednesday. We had Fresh Off the Boat on Wednesday, all back in the day when it was like two of those. And we've had some, you know, here and there that haven't been, you know, as amazing. But in my opinion, there's always been at least three, you know, maybe one kind of weak one towards the end. And then the drama would always be pretty strong as well. Um, but this year, man, this is just a total shit show in my opinion. Like, of all of these shows, of all five of these shows, the only one that I think is remotely interesting is The Goldbergs. The Goldbergs is one of my favorite TV shows of all time. Uh, I absolutely love it. It's one of my all-time favorite comedies. But that is the only one that I think is remotely interesting here. Um, and it's a super, super disappointing letdown for uh, ABC sitcoms because they have just lost so much ground in that respect over the years. Uh, Modern Family last year was its last season, so that one's gone. Uh, Fresh Off the Boat last year was its last season, so that one's gone. Uh, they canceled American Housewife last year, so that one's gone. Blackish, they're pushing back to the spring, so it's not on the fall schedule. So the only one left here is the Goldbergs, like I said. Uh, the Wonder Years is brand new for this year, and it is a remake of the 80s Wonder Years uh, that we actually talked about on the best TV show uh, video a little while back. And that is super risky, in my opinion. That is always, always, always a huge gamble to do remakes in general, but one of one of the most beloved and one of the most critically acclaimed sitcoms of all time. Uh, not even just sitcoms, just TV shows, period, because uh, it was featured in the top 100, as I just mentioned. So this is going to be a massive, massive risk on ABC's part. I don't know if what they're doing to promote this and who they have behind it is enough, frankly, because we saw this before with the Roseanne uh, remake, right? Or not the remake, but the reboot um, from a few years back. Uh, Roseanne is one of the most critically acclaimed and one of the most popular shows of all time. And it earned that because of the way that it was relatable and the way that it wasn't just your everyday family sitcom. It had real issues that people uh, in real life were dealing with, and it was able to uh, talk about those things in a very you know honest way, and it didn't sugarcoat anything. And when the reboot came out, a lot of people thought that it was good, but it wasn't as um, you know honest as it should have been. 
And then when Roseanne left and it became the Connors, which we'll talk about in a minute, ratings absolutely plummeted and everyone hated it. Like, like I found out recently that this is actually one of the lowest reviewed shows on IMDb, believe it or not. And it's because that fan base just really felt like they dishonored the legacy of the original Roseanne because it just took it in a direction that was not reminiscent of what they had come to expect from it. And I feel like the Wonder Years, they are going to fall into a trap that's very similar to that if they don't really, really push this one. Um, and that's a super, super risky uh, uh, position to be in for ABC because the sitcoms are like the the only thing, in my opinion, that's really keeping them afloat because they had, you know, excellent ones, like I said, like Modern Family and Black are some of the most critically acclaimed of all time. And they have just absolutely been on the downward slope with it. So this is super disappointing to see. Uh, and like I said, the Wonder Years is going to be a massive risk for them. Uh, the Connors, like we said, uh, just at least now, like the ratings are nothing and it's just become a pretty hated show on TV. So I don't think that's going to do them any favors. Home Economics was like a last minute season replacement from last year. How the fuck it got a season two, I have no idea because the ratings were absolute shit. Um, the only the only thing I know about this show is that Topher Grace is on it and I've kind of been meaning to watch it just because I kind of want to see like what it's like for him because it's been so long since that 70s show. But like I've heard nothing about this show because no one is watching it. No one is talking about it. So I don't know how the hell it got a season two, let alone got a fall lineup like that. That is just a miracle. Whoever is behind this show uh, is doing something with the ABC executive because that's the only explanation I can think of. And then at 10 there, the drama Million Little Things, it's basically a knockoff This Is Us. Um, this Is Us is one of the most uh, critically acclaimed and one of the most popular shows on TV right now. And from everything I've heard about this show, the common consensus is like, why would you watch this when This Is Us exists, you know? Or why would you watch this when Parenthood exists, you know? And that was from a few years back as well. That was another huge drama for NBC back in the day. Um, and this is just a real, like, copycat of that, and it just doesn't really do anything unique or, or interesting to make it stand out uh, when those other shows are so much better. So, like I said, I think this is easily the worst uh, lineup that ABC put out this year. This might be the worst lineup of any of these uh, TV networks, honestly, because this is just an absolute shit show, and I feel like they are just absolutely going to be uh, decimated in ratings this year with this. Next up with CBS here, we have two game shows from 8 to 10 here. We have Survivor and Tough as Nails, and then we have a brand new drama, CSI Vegas, which is going to be interesting. Now, to me personally, I have never been a fan of Survivor. I know that that's a hot take. I know that a lot of people disagree with me on that. I get the appeal of Survivor. I can see why it's been as popular as it's been over the last few years. But to me, the actual, like, competition and the actual, like, like challenges and stuff just feel so freaking lame. Like, like uh, have you ever seen on um, YouTube where they edit a sitcom and they remove the laugh tracks, right? So it's just the characters and the, the dialogue and everything. And it's so, like, awkward when there isn't a laugh track there and it's just, like, silence. If you ever see Survivor edits with... Uh, of the challenges without the music. It's the same sort of idea where it's just like a silence and it's just Jeff Probes being like, yeah, go guys, like, yeah, you can do it. You can do it, guys. And there's just like pauses of awkward stuff. Like it is, it is really bizarre. And that is just always what I've felt about Survivor like is just, the challenges are just so lame. So I get the, the drama and everything and like the, the banter between the contestants would be interesting, but I've never really been a fan, so to me, this is just one that I would never watch, and then Tough as Nails just seems like a really dumb concept to me. It's about, like, woodworking and stuff, and um, it's hosted by uh, the guy that hosts The Amazing Race, who I like, but um, I just never really got the concept on that one. So these two back-to-back, -back, they make sense because they're in the same genre, but these are just two that I feel like are just so incredibly weak um, in terms of stuff that I wouldn't watch personally. And then putting them behind, or putting them in front of, excuse me, CSI Vegas is a really, really dumb move on C on CBS's part because CS CSI Vegas 
is turning out to be like the big drama, the big, big new show of this year. Uh, everyone knows the original CSI with Ted Danson, hugely popular way, way back in the day, in the early 2000s there. Uh, it was one of the longest running TV shows of all time. It was on for like 16 seasons or something, uh, hugely popular. And then they had CSI Miami and CSI New York that were huge spinoffs. The last time they attempted a CSI show was back in 2015 with CSI Cyber. And if you guys know the story behind this one, this is one of the most infamous TV spinoffs of all time because CSI Cyber was a massive flop. It had super low ratings. It was one of the most panned shows of the season. And a lot of people, from what I've heard from people that really, really love CSI, is because it alienated a lot of the tropes and a lot of things that made it feel like CSI. It didn't really include any of that. So what you were left with was a very by-the-numbers police procedural with a really stupid gimmick about it being about like cyber crimes and hacking and stuff. And it just didn't really fit the narrative that these shows have crafted for so long. That was such a draw for so many people. Um, but thankfully this year with CSI Vegas, they're bringing it back because they haven't had a CSI show on for a long time. It's been all NCIS. So this is its first proper entry into the franchise for six years now. So there's a lot of hype behind this. Uh, CSI Vegas is definitely a, uh, a, a throwback to the original because the original was set in Vegas, which is really cool. Um, so it'll be really cool for any CSI fans watching that this is like they're bringing it back and they're doing it, you know, the old school way. And uh, like I said, this is turning out to be the big event of, of this TV season. So I'm not even that big of a CSI guy, but even I would would recognize that this is like going to be a massive, massive hit for CBS. But putting it behind um, these two game shows that kind of have like a very different audience is a really weak decision in my eyes. It's a really weird one. I would have put this um, maybe up here with the NCIS shows, maybe move these sitcoms down here, or even up here with the uh, maybe take out SEAL Team or something and put it on the Sunday lineup. I thought that would have been a much better uh, um, decision on their part. So a little bit of a, uh, of a weird uh, decision with the transition there, but overall a, a pretty solid lineup, I'd say. It's definitely going to bring in people. I, I will say that. They definitely have a lot of hype surrounding it. And Survivor has had a huge audience for a long time. So it's going to bring people in, but I just don't know if the chemistry of these shows uh, is really at their fullest potential. With the CW, we have Legends of Tomorrow and Batwoman, two DC comic shows uh, put back to back like that. Again, you know, CW, that's what they're known for. That's their bread and butter. So no surprises there. Uh, both of these have been on for uh, a little while now. So they've uh, garnered uh, a bit, you know, a bit of a fan base and stuff. Batwoman specifically has had sort of a negative reputation um, because of some things politically that they've done on the show that I'm not going to get into here. Um, but if you want to look any of that up for yourself, uh, feel free. Um, but in terms of just the core audience and stuff, the DC universe, you know, that's been massively popular for a long time now. So uh, no surprises, like I said, that these two are paired together. For Fox, we have The Mass Singer at 8 and a brand new drama called Alter Ego. Uh, there is like little to no information on this that doesn't have a page. So Honestly, I have no idea what that show is. Um, I haven't really bothered to look into it because to me, it's just like a lot of new shows can be very hit or miss. And if, if I see it, you know, I'll watch it if I see some promos for it. But most of the time, um, I'm really looking for my shows, you know, the shows that I am familiar with um, and ones that I know I'm going to be watching. Uh, just to add a bunch of shows on top of that can be a little overwhelming. So usually uh, for new shows, I'm usually just going to watch them. And, you know, if I see a commercial or two, uh, I might check it out. So uh, I don't really know anything about this one. The Mass Singer is huge. Uh, it's been one of the biggest competition shows for a long time. Uh, I wouldn't really classify it in the same way that I would like... Um, like The Voice or American Idol or anything like that because it doesn't have the same like, it, it's not exactly like um, the same format, I guess. It, there's like more of a gimmick to it, but it's popular and I'm not gonna deny that it brings people in. So, uh, and it's huge for Fox specifically. So I think these two could work. It depends on this. Um, this is really the biggest wild card of the season because I don't know like anything about this show. Um, but I'm probably not going to be watching it because 
The Chicago's are back for this season on NBC. We have Med, Fire, and PD. The lineup that you know and love, uh, especially if you're a Dick Wolf fan like me. Uh, I mentioned earlier that me and Steph absolutely love these shows. We've been watching these consistently for years now. Uh, and it's one of our all-time favorite franchises. So easily, easily, easily going to be watching these three. Uh, so in terms of like any of these other ones, I probably won't be watching uh, anything. Maybe we'll check out CSI Vegas like on streaming or something. But as far as like when we're watching it live on TV, uh, this is the first like proper, proper night of TV for us is going to be on Wednesdays with the Chicago shows. And honestly, that is who I'm going to give the win to, NBC. The Chicago shows as well, um, all three of them consistently rank in the top 15 for the TV end of year seasons in terms of ratings. Tons of people absolutely love the Chicago shows. Uh, it's been one of Dick Wolf's biggest franchises, even bigger than FBI, frankly, even bigger than FBI. So uh, still has its core roots with, you know, what he does and kind of his style and his tone and stuff. And like I said, it has a massive, massive fan base as well. Uh, easily the worst of this lineup is definitely ABC. They're just absolutely going to get crushed in every way here. Um, I just, like, if you compare any of the individual hours to it, like, all of these other shows, maybe Alter Ego, but that's, like, the only one that I think um, maybe might fall under. But, like, everything else, like, here we have Survivor, we have Med, we have The Mass Singer, like, any of those three could easily topple the Wonder Years for sure. And then at 10, we have PD and, and CSI Vegas. Like, what the hell, man? You're going to watch a This Is Us knockoff over CSI or Chicago PD? The hell you are, man. You are capping your fucking ass off for that. So, yeah, ABC, that's a real disappointment here. I, I hate to say it, but they easily have the weakest lineup for Wednesday. Over to Thursday now, we have on ABC Station 19, which is a spinoff of Grey's Anatomy, for those who don't know, and appropriately enough, Grey's Anatomy at 9 there, and then Big Sky at 10 o'clock there. Now, I would say that ABC could have redeemed themselves here with a pretty good lineup for Thursday because these two work obviously incredibly well because they're part of the same franchise. And I love Big Sky. I think Big Sky is a great show. Uh, one of me and Steph's favorites from last year that we started watching. But I have a qualm with Big Sky because ABC is treating it like crap this year. Uh, so th here's the story of Big Sky. It came out in the fall of 2020, and it was a really hyped up show. There was a lot of buzz surrounding it and it did really well for its first, you know, few episodes. It was like between like episodes one through like eight, right? The first half of the season, it did really well. Uh, but then it took a big hiatus because of winter and because of COVID. Uh, there were individual episodes or like individual weeks where they delayed an episode because they could only produce so many at a time because they were actively working against COVID, which is really a, a challenge for all of these shows. but. For one that, you know, me and my girlfriend were watching, it was even more pressing because we obviously wanted to see new episodes. So it was kind of frustrating trying to keep up with it week to week. Um, the other thing is that they were putting it behind a block of sitcoms, which most of them now have been uh, canceled because those were all really low performers as well. So the only thing keeping them alive on that particular day, which used to be Tuesday, was Big Sky, naturally. Um, but then when the hiatus was done and they came back with the newer episodes, the story in the show had changed because of a big plot point, which I won't spoil here, but there was, you know, a big event that happened that kind of shifted the tone, and shifted the story of the show naturally. So when it came back, it was working with a lot of these new characters and this kind of new plot that they had going. And a lot of people felt like it didn't really continue the same way that it was supposed to, and it kind of just felt like a different show. Uh, it didn't really translate all too well um, after the hiatus like it was supposed to. And me and my girlfriend just kind of stopped watching it live because we kind of fell out of it. Um, and we just kind of caught up on streaming every now and again uh, when we had the time because we both felt like the last, the back half of the season was kind of weak. Um, and overall, the problem with that as well was 
for a normal fall show, it would have like 22 to 24 episodes. They would fill in all the weeks and, you know, they would always put out a new episode for Big Sky because they were working against this hiatus in COVID. They only put out 16, so it was way less than a normal show would typically have. And as a result, the ratings were very up and down. Sometimes it was as high as four to five, which was pretty solid. Sometimes it was as low as two and a half. So it, it bounced around a lot. And, and I was personally really scared that it was going to get the X because ratings like that, especially for a drama with a lot of action and a lot of like big stunts and everything, which Big Sky does, um, typically more expensive. So I was worried that it was going to go the way of like a stump town. That was a great action show but left us after one season. Somehow, by a miracle, it got renewed for a second, but instead of putting it back on its normal time and kind of hoping to get back on track with a normal schedule, they move it to a different night and they put it up against a ton of huge competition uh, on this schedule, which is a real shame because between, well, we're gonna talk about Fox and NBC, they're just gonna destroy the competition and no one's gonna be watching Big Sky, including us, because there's a different show on here that we're gonna be watching in its time slot. So that was really frustrating as well. Uh, that's another big L for ABC. Um, these, th like, okay, putting Big Sky up again with Grey's Anatomy and Station 19, which are all dramas, big franchises, that's smart but putting it up against the other shows compared to the other networks was a boneheaded move. So that is my opinion, at least. Um, so they're just kind of like tossing it out there, which I just feel like is a real shame because Big Sky is super underrated and it's already competing against, you know, a ton of other shows to begin with and didn't really have the best start because of COVID. So a lot of people just aren't watching it and even less people are gonna be watching it for season two. So. So overall, I think that the actual schedule for ABC is pretty good, but um, in terms of the competition, they're gonna take another huge L here, uh, which we'll talk about a little bit later. For CBS here, they are doing their uh, four sitcoms and then a uh, drama at 10 on Thursdays, which is cool. They have Young Sheldon at eight, The United States of Al at 8.30, uh, Ghost at nine, and Be Positive at 9.30, and then Bull as their 10 o'clock uh, bookend for their drama there. Uh, Young Sheldon, hugely popular, right? Big Bang Theory spinoff. Uh, it and Big Bang Theory were consistently in the top 10 for ratings. We've talked about that on several other videos as well. Um, even though it's a show that I personally don't like, I know it has a massive, massive audience. And CBS is like super confident with Young Sheldon because they've already renewed it for like four more seasons after uh, it was like the last year they renewed it for like three or four more seasons. So it's up to like season nine or something or eight or nine. And this is going to be like five or something like that. So hugely, hugely popular. Uh, United States of Al. So that's actually a show that I'm meaning to watch because uh, it has a really good cast on it. Um, here, let me pull it up here so you guys can see. Uh, this is actually a show that like it's weird because most people probably don't really care about CBS shows that much anymore or like CBS sitcoms because they're really the only network that like keeps with tradition with like the laugh tracks and stuff and this is another example of it um, but as you can see here there is a particular name in the executive producer column that I am very very fond of Mr. Chuck Lorre there uh, it wasn't created by him, but he does have a hand in producing it. And you guys know that I absolutely love Chuck Lorre. He's one of my all-time favorites. Um, but if we go down to the cast here, I was actually reading about this the other day, and there's actually a couple big names in here that I was surprised by. Uh, this gentleman here, which I am totally going to butcher this name, uh, Adhir Kal Kalyan, <laughs> Kalyan, I think, uh, Adhir Kalyan. Uh, I'm so sorry if I butchered that because I probably did. Um, but this gentleman was actually a uh, pretty re recurring character on Rules of Engagement. You can see he played Timmy on Rules of Engagement. And uh, for those who are unaware, it's actually one of my favorite sitcoms. Uh, I think we talked about it in the uh, sitcom tournament video. I think it was in, uh, if I remember correctly. So uh, I think it's, it's always been underrated in my eyes. And I always thought he was a nice addition to it. So I was really excited to see him. But then also this guy here, Dean Norris, who you might recognize from playing Hank on Breaking Bad here. So they got some really, really big names to tie into the sitcom here. Of course, Chuck Lorre has a lot of clout for CBS. 
Um, so like I said, this is one that I've been meaning to check out for a while now. Um, I probably will get to it sooner than later because of those, you know, big names, like I said. I uh, really like Dean Norris as well in general. I just think he's a great actor. Um, so I've been curious about it. But again, because of the competition, I feel like that is going to be one that's going to struggle a bit. It does have the lead-in from from Young Sheldon, so that will help it. Um, but I just don't know how, like, popular it's going to be. You know what I mean? And 9 o'clock here, Ghost, which is a... Uh, kind of a remake, uh, reinterpretation, if you will, of a BBC sitcom of the same name that's been popular over in Britain for a little while, and they're bringing, they're making a U.S. version of it for CBS, which is cool. I uh, don't really know if it has a lot of ground here, if it doesn't, if it has a lot of clout or anything, but you know, it could go either way. Uh, again, the lead in there is going to be a relatively strong, so I think that'll help it. And then be positive here, which. I believe is another Chuck Lorre show, actually. Uh, another one that I've kind of been uh, meaning to get to. Yeah, he's another producer on this. So again, he didn't create it, but um, he does have a hand in producing it. And this one uh, starring Thomas Middleditch, which you might recognize from Veep, if you, or not Veep, excuse me, uh, Silicon Valley, if you've ever seen a different HBO uh, sitcom there, uh, Silicon Valley. Uh, and, and I've been a big fan of him for a long time here. So that's another one I've been meaning to check out there. Uh, so I think overall the sitcom lineup is pretty strong here. Uh, not everything flowing, like this ghost could be kind of a hit or miss show, but I think everything else is relatively strong in its place. And then Bull as the uh, 10 o'clock uh, drama there. This show's been on for a long time now. I actually used to watch this um, in its first couple seasons. I was a fan of it. Uh, it's based on the life of Dr. Phil, of all things, um, but it's had a pretty solid reputation. Like I it's not something I didn't keep up with it just because there were so many other shows that caught my eye that I kind of fell out of watching it but like I said for the first couple seasons I thought it was pretty good so maybe one day I'll come back to it uh, but either way um it's been on for like five or six years now so uh, it's got a pretty strong reputation so overall CBS I would say thumbs up for them they are uh this is definitely a solid lineup for the CW here in my opinion, this is the CW's weakest lineup of uh, the entire schedule here. We have Walker at 8, which is a remake of Walker, Texas Ranger, you can see there, which this actually began uh, last year, surprisingly enough, and I didn't even know about it. Like, it, it, it flew so far under the radar um, because I didn't hear any buzz or any promotion about it, which is funny as hell because Walker, Texas Ranger is like, it's a big show. I mean, it's it was one of the most popular shows from back in the day, um, but it's like so far past its prime. You know what I mean? Like you look back on Walker Texas Ranger, and that shit has aged so poorly. Uh, so whoever thought deciding to make a remake of it was a really really weird move, uh, especially for CW. And then we have Legacies here, which is another kind of like sci-fi uh, drama type thing that they're known for. So. Like I said, I just feel like these two together are super, super bizarre, super weak. Um, and again, in ratings, they're just going to get absolutely crushed, specifically because of these last two here, which we'll go over. Uh, we have Fox here, which is going to be Thursday Night Football. So that's what I was talking about before, uh, two different days for football there. And again, Thursday Night Football, I mean, because it's football, they're just going to absolutely uh, destroy in the ratings there. Uh, very curious to see how it'll compete against Sunday Night Football. I don't really know if it like one has an advantage over the other, but it's still pretty interesting to see. Uh, so like I said, they're just going to absolutely destroy. And then on NBC, this is what me and Steph, of course, are going to be talking about, uh, or we're going to be watching, rather, uh, the three Law & Order shows here. So we have at 8 and at 8.30 here, uh, the hour block. We have Law & Order for the Defense, which is a brand new spinoff show for course law and order there we have svu at nine and organized crime at 10 and uh again this block is fantastic all three from the same franchise all three by the same people of course another dick wolf uh uh series there so if you are not on the dick wolf train man you have so many opportunities you really have no excuse not to check out some of these shows because you got the fbi shows on tuesday you got the chicago shows on wednesday and you have the law and order shows on thursday so for anyone out there that is not on the Dick Wolf train already, you gotta get on that bad boy. Hmm. Now, I do have a couple uh, qualms with the way that it's structured though. Now these two back to back I think is excellent, right? And that's what we've seen before. We have 
uh, SVU at nine, which has held that slot for many, many years. And the new one, well, newer uh, organized crime there, which was brand new for last year as a direct spinoff from uh, 10 to 11 there. The new show being right up front is a little risky because this is going to, from what I've heard, have a totally new cast, uh, be, you know, brand new characters and everything. And the um, tagline there for the defense is in reference to what the sort of plot and the story is going to be about, which is taking the look at the defense lawyers for a lot of the cases that the law and order people have, you know, uh, charged over the years and kind of seen it from their point of view, which is really interesting um, because the original Law and Order from way back in the day did a lot of the courtroom side of things. And they did, you know, half of it was the police procedural and the, you know, on the street with the detectives. And then the second half was always about the lawyers and, and the, and the um, you know, prosecuting uh, part of it. So that's the Law and Order, respectively. And they really haven't done that in a proper Law and Order show since, like, season 15, 16 of SVU, which was a while ago uh, now because it's on season 23. So it's been quite a few years since they've done a proper, like, courtroom, you know, block for it uh, where they had it, like, in every episode. So this is going to be really, really interesting to see. Uh, I'm very much looking forward to it. But again, having it right up front there as the first show of the night is going to be a little risky there. Uh, that's another thing, too, I forgot to mention with uh, ABC, which I'm not as familiar with the Grey's Anatomy stuff, so maybe this is how it always has been. But it seems weird to put the spinoff in front of the original show. If it, Is that just me? So, But I just thought that was kind of interesting. Um, so, yeah, I'm not sure how uh, that as a whole is going to um, kind of do for the, the night as a whole because uh, I'm really stuttering here uh, for the whole, because it's the newest of the shows and having that right up front is a little risky, but I think these two back to back is great. Uh, I think that's definitely going to be a big win. So overall uh, commercially and ratings wise, obviously Fox is going to take this one. Uh, and then as far as the fan favorite, gotta go Law and Order here. And overall, the worst, like I said, definitely the CW on this one. Uh, the Walker Texas Ranger reboot, man. That is just, that is a boneheaded move if I ever saw one. All right, we're almost through here. Uh, let's go on to Friday here. Friday and Saturday are definitely the least prioritized as far as uh, the overall networks go because Friday and Saturday are usually the times when most people are out doing anything other than watching TV. Uh, so they just kind of put in shows that, you know, will have an audience but aren't really like the most important ones uh, for most people at least. Uh, beginning with ABC here, we have Shark Tank at 8 and we have 2020 at 9 here for two hours there uh, competing against Dateline there, which are very similar shows, kind of like those news magazines, true crime type stuff, which a lot of people really like. Uh, I've been a fan of Shark Tank for years, so uh, I have no problems with this. Uh, these two back-to-back -back have been kind of the style on Fridays for a long time now. Uh, the thing with, like, you know, Friday in general, like I said, like, these aren't really going to be prioritized, so it's not really like there's a huge win or a huge loss for any of these, but I say this is a pretty solid one. Like, you know, Shark Tank has a fan base and 2020 is doing its thing, so they don't really transition the best, but it's irrelevant because it's Friday, you know, so... So this is fine for me. Uh, I got no problems with this. For CBS here, I think overall they have the strongest lineup on Friday. They have SWAT, Magnum PI, and Blue Bloods, respectively. Uh, SWAT is a show, is another one that Steph really likes, so she'll be watching this, I know, uh, from 8 to 9 there. Uh, it's one of the main characters on this show is played by one of the main characters from uh, Criminal Minds. And uh, let me see if I can get his name up here, because... I know he's a pretty popular actor. Shamir Moore is the guy. Yeah, this gentleman. Uh, he was on uh, Criminal Minds for its entire run, and Steph was a huge fan of Criminal Minds back in the day, so she was very excited when he announced that he was going to be doing a new police procedural show, and it's been pretty successful for the past few years, so glad to see it coming back. Uh, Magnum P.I., same thing, a remake of an older show uh, from way back in the day uh, featuring Tom Selleck in the OG version. Uh, this is actually part of a... It's interesting because it's like Magnum P.I., Hawaii Five-0, and there's a couple, oh, MacGyver, I think, was one. Uh, they're all part of, like, the same in-universe sort of setup, but they're not 
uh, directly all in the same franchise, if that makes sense. Like, the Law & Order series are all in the same franchise, and the Chicago shows are all in the same franchise, but the two of them are also in the same universe. So that's kind of like CBS's take on it. They have Magnum P.I. and MacGyver and Hawaii Five-0 were all in the same universe, so they would have different crossovers and stuff like that. And uh, they were always being on the Friday night lineup, which makes sense. So Magnum P.I. returning again here. Uh, like I said, I think Hawaii Five-0 is done, and MacGyver, I think this might be its last season, or it could have been, it could have ended last year. Um, as you can tell, I, I don't really keep up with the uh, CBS dramas all that much, but I know they have a big fan base, so I uh, want to give them some uh, you know time here to discuss them. And then Blue Bloods here at 10. Uh, this is the one that I'm most familiar with. Again, this is another one that we talked about in our drama tournament. Uh, the way that I see it is on Ion again in syndication mostly, so a few episodes at a time here. Uh, this has been on for a long time, man. It says since uh, 2010 it's been on, so this will be its, what, 11th season going on for, which is insane. Um, and I think all of these have, again, great chemistry, a uh, good transition between these, all, you know, police procedural action type shows. So this is another easy win for CBS there on Fridays. For the CW, they have Penn and Teller Fool Us at 8 and Nancy Drew at 9. Uh, neither of these really connect all that well. One is kind of like a reality show, this like magic type show on Penn and Teller, which I actually like quite a bit. Um, I do like Penn and Teller Full Us, but it's not really a show that like I would be a diehard fan. Like I have to get home and watch Penn and Teller, you know what I mean? Like it's just something that if it's on, you know, I'll watch it every now and again, but it's not like I'm going to be keeping up with it every episode. Um, and Nancy Drew is another one that I've seen actually uh, a few episodes here and there. This is actually uh, kind of like a mystery, like a murder mystery type show. It has a really good uh, sort of look and feel to it. Like it's very reminiscent of like classic like 80s detective shows in a way, um, but very modernized, which is cool and very CW. You know, this fits in perfectly with like their Riverdales and their sci-fi type shows as well. Uh, so why they would kind of bookend it for a Friday is kind of weird and put it behind Penn and Teller. Uh, that's kind of a weird move on their part, but uh, either way, I think it's a pretty, uh, you know, both of these have pretty solid fan bases that'll kind of come in and watch their shows, but they're not going to stick around for the other, if that makes sense. Uh, for Fox, they have wrestling, WWE, coming back this year. Uh, so they have two nights dedicated to sports, which I think is awesome for Fox, because that's always something that they've been really good in, is the uh, sports crowd that definitely fits with their demographic. I'm not a wrestling fan. I've never been a wrestling fan at all. Never un understood the appeal of it, but somehow it's still popular, uh, which which honestly blows my mind. Because I know, like way back in the day when I was growing up in like middle school, like a ton of people were into wrestling. But nowadays, it's it's a very specific demographic that it follows. It's a it's a pretty niche thing now. Um, but for the people that like it, they absolutely love them some wrestling. So I'm gonna hold it against them. Uh, so. I don't know if that's going to be like as big as like the NFL would be like clearly the footballs are going to be way way bigger in terms of that so Thursday and Sunday are going to be uh the nights for the sports heads out there but for the wrestling crowd you know it's it'll do what it does um it's not going to be like top of the charts or anything but you know it'll have a pretty solid solid uh, ratings there and then finally on NBC here we have the blacklist from eight to nine and then Dateline, like we said, at 9, they're competing against 2020. Again, uh, these shows don't really mellow that well, but again, it's Friday, so not really as important. Uh, the Blacklist has been on for a long, long time now. James Spader, James Spader of course, they're uh, leading the uh, cast on that one, and it's become a super, super popular show. Uh, it says since 2013 it was on for, so again, uh, lots and lots of people interested in that one there. So overall, I would say the best uh, on Friday are going to be CBS and Fox here. I feel like they have the most uh, kind of cohesive schedules there with the dramas. And then, of course, the wrestling for two hours there is going to be a big draw for fans of it. Uh, overall, the weakest, I don't know, maybe CW here just because these two are just so opposite from one another. But again, I wouldn't say that any of these are like awful like not like we've seen you know so far in this podcast uh we definitely saw some earlier that were just like very very questionable um but overall the friday lineup looking pretty okay and then finally let's finish it here with saturday here on abc they're going to kick it off with saturday night football geez another football and fox says college football wow so there are five different slots dedicated to sports 
there are six different slots. We have the overtime breakdown of the NFL uh, games on Sunday on Fox. Then we have Sunday night football. We have Thursday night football. We have wrestling. We have Saturday night. And we have college football. Wow. So any football fans out there, we know what, what you're going to be watching this year. Man, and Fox has uh, Fox has four of them. They have football on Sunday, on Thursday, and on Saturday. That's insane. Hmm. Clearly, um, a big emphasis on sports this year because of the uh, lack thereof uh, the last year with, of course, COVID and stuff, uh, making that very, very difficult. So obviously a big, big uh, return to form here for this year. Uh, so again, Saturday Night Football, we know that that's going to dominate in terms of ratings there. Uh, CBS, they have this primetime Saturday, which is kind of just like their, um, it's like 48 hours and stuff. Again, kind of similar to Dateline in 2020 there with the two-hour block. And then again, 48 hours there. Uh, sometimes they'll put in uh, like reruns here of like some of their other type shows like SWAT or Blue Bloods might be in there or like the, um, they make the spot to CSI Vegas because it's new. Um, sometimes on Saturday, uh, they'll put in a rerun of whatever their new big hit show is, you know, whatever is the most popular. So for CBS, it'll probably be something like, like I said, uh, the CSI or maybe the FBI they might throw in there as well they have a couple different slots dedicated for that um so it's usually a good spot you know if you miss it then you can always watch it again on saturday there uh for the cw they have whose line is it anyway which is uh, super popular for them and world's funniest animals which i guess was new last year i'm reading uh, i got renewed for second season so these are uh you know kind of the reality type um you know improv type shows comedy type stuff uh, Whose Line Is That Anyway is one of my favorite shows that they've had for a long, long time now. I love the cast on that show. And then World's Funniest Animals is kind of like uh, AFV in a way, where it's like, you know, people sending in videos and stuff and they commentate on it. Uh, so that format's been popular for a long time as well. Uh, so I don't think that's a terrible schedule, but on Saturday, uh, especially in, in uh, competition with all these other sports, I feel like that's just, it's going to serve a very, very niche audience. Fox, we talked about uh, the college football, again, going to be big for ratings as well. Um, and then in terms of NBC here, we have the Encore programming, which is, again, probably a rerun of something big, probably this Law & Order they'll have in there. Um, what else could it be? Maybe this one that, um, was this a sinkhole one? Yeah, I think it was the, the one with the sinkhole. That's what they should call it. Uh, they might have in there, but again, because it's Encore, you know, it's not really going to bring in a ton of people. Uh, another Dateline here at 902, and then SNL Vintage, which they've had in the spot for a long time now. Uh, of course, they're going to do SNL later on Saturday, so it makes sense to have a uh, uh, rerun of it. Uh, you guys know I, I'm huge on SNL. I absolutely love SNL. Uh, and watching the old SNLs is really, really interesting because sometimes they'll play one as old as like from the 70s or 80s. And then the next week, it'll be like one from like a couple seasons ago and it'll be more recent. And you get to really see the contrast between the two, which I think is really, really cool. So overall on Saturday, uh, obviously ABC and Fox are going to dominate here because of the... Uh, the football and stuff, and I guess if I had to throw a weakest one out, it'd probably be CBS, because I feel like whatever this NBC uh, show is that's new is probably going to be overall more popular than the CBS ones. Um, if you're putting, excuse me, if you're putting like the Law and Order versus like the CSI, you know, those could be really neck and neck, um, but overall I feel like the 48 hours is less than Dateline as well. And I think the SNL is pretty strong overall. So I'd probably say CBS has the weakest here. But again, it's Saturday. So it's it's very, very minimal in terms of like the overall like, you know, highs and lows here is really not going to affect them all that much. All right. So now that we've seen the entire schedule up and down every night here for the fall, uh, the last thing I want to do before this episode is over is give you overall my thoughts on the overall networks ranked from highest to lowest in terms of their overall programming blocks here and the overall shows that they're bringing back to TV this year. Uh, so I think my number one here has to go to NBC. Uh, between Sunday Night Football, they're going to dominate. The Voice we said was going to be huge uh, here on Monday and Tuesday. They're going to kill it with the Law and Orders and the Chicago's, of course. We already talked about that. 
And I think overall their weekend programming, even though it's not the strongest, you know, the blacklist is pretty popular as well. So I think overall they have the top lineup here. I think they take number one definitely on Wednesday and definitely on Sunday here uh, with football, like I said. And then Monday too with The Voice, I think they have a pretty, pretty strong hand over it, especially over Dancing with the Stars. Uh, specifically in that same time slot. So I think NBC is going to be top dog this year uh, with their overall schedule. Number two, I'm going to go with CBS here. I think CBS, CBS is still like we talked about earlier. Um, a lot of people are, are writing them off now because they really st stick to tradition here. Um, and they kind of make shows for a very specific demographic that most people aren't really into now. But I feel like CBS is doing a lot this year that's really going to put them ahead. Uh, FBI is going to be massive here. We talked about the NCIS. Uh, their spinoff shows this year between NCIS Hawaii and CSI Vegas are going to be huge for them. Uh, I think their line of sitcoms is the best that we saw this year. Uh, overall, I think CBS has a very, very solid lineup. The only thing they're lacking here is they don't have any sports this year. So no football for them and nothing like you know, specifically for them, that's going to like dominate, dominate. But I think they are always like very, very steady. Like every night we saw, every day we saw has a pretty solid lineup for them. They don't have anything that's like really like, you know, bottom of the barrel level uh, lineup in, in terms of their show. So I'm going to give them silver here for third place. I'm going to go with Fox. Uh, they obviously are going to have a huge leg up in terms of the sports with Thursday Night Football, the wrestling is going to be big, and uh, the college football is also going to be pretty big as well. Um, but in terms of their general shows, I think they have a pretty strong setup here. They got the animation stuff on Sunday. They got 911 is going to be big. Uh, they got The Masked Singer, which is big as well. Uh, their Friday is the wrestling, so we already said that. So yeah, they don't have as many um, like actual show shows this year, but the ones they have are very, very strong. They do have a couple new ones that could be a little hit or miss. This Alter Ego is a huge wild card, we said. Uh, this one that was, yeah, the like historical soap opera drama type thing um, could be a little hit or miss. But overall, I, I would still say that they're pretty steady. I'm going to give them third place here. Fourth, I'm going the CW here. I'm going CW fourth. Um, their weekend lineup is a little lacking, but I think their, their prime time, like Monday through Friday, is pretty strong. They got the you know Friday Night Lights All American there their new show which we said they could do really well with the sci-fi stuff uh, Flash and Riverdale together is a big win for them uh, Batwoman and the DC type stuff Legends of Tomorrow we said uh, they are losing points with Walker for sure and just the general fact that they're the CW you know they're not gonna top ratings they're not gonna be like number one or anything. Um, but they have a pretty solid lineup, I gotta say, and uh, definitely a couple shows that I know some people out there listening to this will definitely be uh, more intrigued by, I think, uh, after listening to this podcast. Hopefully, uh, some of you that like the sports will be uh, checking out All American, because I've heard really good things about that, like I said, and there's a lot of opportunity for sports fans here to get their fix. And then that leaves ABC in last place this year, and for good reason, because I think the only... I think the only schedule that they have that's like actually somewhat decent is maybe Thursday with the Grey's Anatomy stuff and Friday with Shark Tank. I mean, that is, I'm serious, man. I mean, they do have the Saturday Night Football, so that's obviously going to win them uh, some points for the sports guys. But like their actual programming this year is not good. It is not good, guys. Uh, Sunday, they really missed the mark with the game shows. Uh, Dancing with the Stars and The Bachelorette are just really, really not that popular anymore. Really not going to win any over anybody with those two the good doctor's okay but they're gonna lose steam uh due to the competition same thing with queens uh same thing with a million little things but the big takeaway here is their wednesday lineup is terrible their wednesday lineup this year is really really bad and they have no chance whatsoever of getting a top slot especially against the uh chicago's especially against like survivor we said mass singer like they're just absolutely gonna be trampled on Wednesday. Excuse me, taking a drink here for that. Not because of ABC's loss, just as I've been talking for a while. Uh, what are we on here? About an hour and a half. So 
I do want to thank you guys for listening and or watching for this first episode of the podcast. Hopefully you guys did enjoy it. If you did, let me know if this is something that you want to see me do somewhat regularly. Uh, probably won't be like weekly, but maybe like every other week or maybe monthly we could do. Uh, again, if you have any ideas for uh, what we should talk about, anything that's relevant right now in the world of TV, anytime any of these schedules get released, we'll definitely go over them for sure because I think this is a good format to do on a podcast because uh, it's very conversational. And uh, to uh, transition to that, let me know what you're going to be watching this year. Uh, do you agree with any of my predictions or rankings? Uh, let me know uh, what shows interest you the most, especially of those new ones. And with that said, uh, thank you guys for watching. Like and subscribe, of course. And we'll see you in the next one.